Last thing on ED I wanted to talk to you about is this uh, device that a couple of my patients have talked about. I think it's called Gainswave. Sure. What is it? So Gainswave is just a company uh, but that uses devices for shockwave therapy. Okay. So I just have to give you a little bit of history about shockwave therapy. In 2010, Dr. Vardy, a European study, was the first to start using shockwaves to treat ED. And you, shockwaves are not new to urologists. We use high-intensity shockwave for kidney stones, yeah. right? This That's is what lithotripsy, lithotripsy is, right? is. Yeah. It's called high-intensity shockwave. This is called low-intensity shockwave therapy, or LIST right? And when I first saw that, I'll be honest with you, I thought it didn't make a lot of sense. I said, this is ridiculous. He's shocking the penis two to three times a week, three weeks, 2,500 shocks. What is he doing? But the science is actually quite clever. The science is you're inducing trauma. When you induce trauma, you bring in neoangiogenesis, right? You mm. actually recruit stem cells, right? You help with nitric oxide synthase. So it actually is helping improve the condition. We weren't the first. Cardiologists have been doing it for years. If you look at cardiologists, they were shocking the heart and they re look at the reperfusion and it was reperfusing the heart. Uh, orthopedics do it for uh, joints and they use it for plantar fasciitis. And it's used for a lot of conditions. But this was shocking the penis in 2010. So since then... And uh, again, pardon my ignorance, how is the device applied? So it is, think of it like a probe. And okay. what happens, you have to have someone doing, uh, performing the procedure. Yep. We divide the penis in six zones. So it's shaft, hilum, and cruce, and in, in two sides, so six zones. And we will typically... Uh, and, and sorry, just explain where each of those is. So the hilum is, uh, the, the shaft is obviously the shaft of the yep. penis. The hilum is where the, at the base of the penis. Yep. And the cruce is underneath the scrotum. Okay. Because the, the penile tissues go underneath the scrotum. So we will deliver 2,500 shocks uh, in these six areas. And it takes about 25, 30 minutes and the patients will come in and they'll come in at least one or two times a week for three or six weeks. So six, and you may have to have a booster. So when Vardy did it, he showed that- And the probe is just right on the- Right on the skin. Is it painful? It's not painful. It's well tolerated, no anesthetic necessary. Okay. When Vardy did it, he showed that there was improvement in uh, penile blood flow and men were having better erections. Okay, great. So the issue is that there are two types of machines. There are machines that have a focal shock and those that have a radial shock, okay? And the radial shock is 100 times less in terms of pressure. It's over 1,000 times over in terms of time, so it's a longer shock, and it's less penetration. And quite frankly, this is like a pneumatic machine. The pneumatic machine, they do nothing, and but they're not dangerous. So the FDA has called this a type 1 medical device, low risk. Anybody can buy it. Yep. So you could be any profession, anyone on the street. The going rate for these is $500 to $1,000 a shock cash so you and i sorry 500 to a thousand dollars for the machine one treatment for one treatment one treatment one treatment machine but costs, you said a guy needs two of these a week for three months or two for uh, three weeks oh okay. so six treatments let's say so okay. anywhere from three thousand to six thousand dollars okay for a machine that's a pneumatic that does nothing in my opinion yeah but the patient doesn't that can be bought by somebody at Costco. You got it. You could go you, to the gas station anybody, and the guy the guy could fill your tank and give you and a little buy, scrotal zap. You nailed it. And he can make five hundred to six thousand dollars for Okay. And the problem is that the E D population is very vulnerable. Right. Because they don't want to go and ask somebody for help to think about this problem. Right. And they're almost desperate. They yep. want treatment, right? Yep. And the other problem is that the ED population has a very high placebo response rate. If I gave 100 men a sugar pill and I told them that this sugar pill would give you the best directions of your life, 30% of men will get the best directions of their life off the sugar pill, right? And then, of course, they're <laughs> going to tell their buddies That's this right. is the best sugar <laughs> right. pill you've ever had. So what you've seen now is an explosion of shockwave clinics throughout the country explosion. Everywhere you go, shockwave, shockwave. Now look, there are certain shockwaves that are very effective. The machines, these are called electrohydraulic machines, electromagnetic machines. These are called class type three machines. And they do work. Now I have to be very careful. They don't work in all patients and we're still learning. And the class three machines, like Gainswave is a class three where the Gainswave you- Gainswave is, is just the, 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 the name company. company. So the device, I don't know exactly what oh, device I they're see, using. I well, I just remember this because again, yeah. I've got two patients who are receiving or have received this treatment who both swear by it. Yeah. But I know that they, at least one of the patients mentioned to me, 
a, only a doctor's office can have this thing. So I so, assumed it was a class three. Class three. So whatever so, the device they yeah, were using. So, and those the, those machines are more expensive. Yep. The electrohydraulic is exactly what the shock wave is for the kidney stone. Yep. But it's a low intensity. Electromagnetic is by Stortz. And but again, I just want to be fair. You know, we this this is where the device took off greater than the science. Yeah, the science sure. is coming up. And I would say that it may be beneficial for patients who have mild to moderate ED, but I just, you be careful on the ads that are given on, you, if you look at these ads, they say, you'll get a great erections today. You'll have great erections by tomorrow. It, the, I mean, the ads are unbelievable. So there's really, you know, so I'm part of, I'm part of the sexual medicine side of North America. We put out a position statement in 2018, should be used investigationally at this time at the AUA, the guidelines for ED, investigational. Both were put out in 2018. It's been five years. There's been new data. But I just want to say, use it with caution. Yeah. Don't tell everyone it's the best thing since sliced bread. It has potential. It has potential. And more studies need to be done. Okay. So we talked about ED. Does it make sense to now talk about premature ejaculation? Is sure. That, I just uh, want to mention two more things oh, about ED. It's stem cells and PRP. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's because that. that's the, that finishes yep, the circle. Finish that up. And so stem cells, um, the problem with stem cells, and we published a paper, we did use stem cells. We had a we had an IDE. There's no FDA approval for this, is yeah, there? Yeah. There's no FDA approval for stem cells for ED. So many patients will have to go to Costa Rica, Panama, outside the country to get the stem cells for ED. Are there people doing it in the United States off-label? They used to, but you are not supposed to because the FDA has said you cannot use stem oh, cells. I see. Got so it. just in general, for any therapy, we I had a I use a, a machine that had an IDE uh, by the FDA, so an investigational uh, dr uh, device exemption, and this was the exemption was for specifically ED for stem cells. I see. So we conducted 30 patients. Uh, we use uh, adipose derived stem cells. We take the fat. We wanted to use it fresh. So we put them in a machine. We would get 37 to 50. So you would literally, this was autologous. You would take a man's fat. adipose tissue, get the stem cells, and then reinfuse. You got it. But the, the, so what I, my, because I wanted a large amount of fat, I actually had a plastic surgeon do the liposuction mm -hmm. under some mild sedation. So it was a little labor intensive. Then I would take the fat, it was 120 cc's of fat, and put it into a machine that had the IDE for. Uh, making stem cells. So the machine after two hours would give me anywhere from 37 to 50 million stem cells. And then I would inject those stem cells into the penile tissue. At the base of the penis? At the again. base of the penis with a tourniquet for two minutes. And you have to inject slow or you'll uh, damage the stem cells. Yep. So we let them sit there for 30 minutes and we take the tourniquet off. And did you have a 30 placebo men? This was non-placebo controlled. And this is important yeah. because up to today, there's not a single placebo controlled trial with stem cells for ED, not one. Right. So given the placebo effect being so high, what was the effect you saw in these 30 men? We saw that they had an increase maybe of four on the IIEF, no placebo control, but it was only durable for six, maybe nine months and started tapering off. So it wasn't a lasting effect, but it was some effect that was going on. But we need a placebo control. So we're going to start a placebo control trial because, you know, people swear by stem cells and some companies will say 15,000 will give you stem cells for ED. Where's the placebo control trial? Right, it doesn't exist. Right, so you have yeah. to be careful. Well, the other thing I guess is at fifteen thousand dollars in Costa Rica, why we would have to believe it's significantly better than daily Cialis at uh, what seventy dollars a year. Yeah. So, so I would say, look, there may be some benefit. I do think there's some benefit in stem cells for ED. And I, I was the number 15,000. I don't know, you know, some people have different numbers, but, yeah. but, but Costa Rica, there are certain places I think that are doing it better than others and they have more science behind it, but we still need more science. So do I think that stem cells have potential for ED? Yes, I do. Do we need more studies? Absolutely to show yeah. the efficacy. And the question is, if I'm spending a lot of time doing a liposuction for, and, and it lasts for six months, I can't do this for a life. I mean, that's not a practical way to do Although, that. <laughs> you know, one might argue, oh my God, that's fantastic. I'm getting free liposuction every six months. At some point, yeah. I'm gonna, you're going to take all the subcutaneous yeah. fat out of my body. But no, that's not a viable solution. Yeah. But exosomes may be the next way. Well, let's, of, what, are, what are exosomes? So basically, this is, it's basically the secretome, what's coming out of the stem cells. So people are looking at exosomes, and I think that may be another alternative mm -hmm. to look in the future. So you well, how have, are they harvested? So that's basically, look, you can look at placental, uh, uh, and you can look at also looking from the patient's own tissue, typically 
like that, but mostly from bone marrow. So they get it from the bone marrow. But again, you have to believe that the durability of this is right. much longer to justify right. this. I mean, can you imagine saying we're going to take a bone marrow biopsy on you every yes. six to nine months right. to get your stem cells, to give us your exosomes, to do this procedure? Right. Some people will take the stem cells and they'll multiply them and they'll get billions and then they'll give you pieces of that. Now, remember, every time you multiply them, every time you get past four, the efficacy starts going down. So yeah. I'd be a little careful, you know. So I do think there's some potential promise, but we still are lacking in the science with the stem cells. PRP, now that's interesting. Until uh, the last year, we, we got our first randomized placebo-controlled trial, first one, until 2020, 21. Before then, there was one case report, one case report with five patients out of Wake Forest showing that there may be some benefit. And this was sold like it was the best thing since sliced bread. They call it the P-shot, uh, which is the Priapis shot. We basically, take stem cells. It costs about $1,500 to $3,000. Now, honestly, to really make it, it costs $50. You take blood, you spin it, you get the supernatant, you spin it again, add some calcium chloride, you have PRP, you know? <laughs> and they inject it. Um, into the now there may be some benefit as well, but this is the one that lacks the most science as well. So there's an excellent study at the University of Miami right now looking at PRP and shockwave combination. Dr. Ramos with Samus placebo with, arms. Uh, with placebo arms, so that's going to be very interesting. When is that expected to be published? I think there's going to be some preliminary results at the AUA this year in April next month. So that's going to be interesting. Okay. Uh, I think it came out as a late breaking. So hopefully next month we'll know more. Yeah. Well, by uh, the time this podcast comes out, it'll be in the past <laughs> tense. So past. we'll link to that. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So my takeaway from everything on ED, just to summarize, is uh, easy way to remember the prevalence is it's matched by age. Yeah. So amazing to think that at 40, which is pretty young, 40% of men are impacted. At my age, 50% of men at 60, 60%, et cetera. Um, Second thing to consider is, you know, if, if men listening to this or their partners are listening, go and get help. Don't, yeah. don't suffer in silence. Uh, third thing to consider is that daily phosphodiesterase inhibitor I took away from you is a very viable solution that there shouldn't be a stigma attached to that. And there shouldn't be a fear that I'm becoming dependent on it or something like that in the sense that these are valuable drugs. They can also sometimes break the vicious cycle if there's a psychogenic component. Exactly. You want to rule out psychogenic before you proceed to pharmacologic uh, as the only therapy. You have the diagnostic side on the arterial venous. Um, and then I think this idea about PRP, stem cells, exosomes, and shockwave, it's still a little bit too soon to know. A little bit too soon. Promising, yeah. but too soon. And of the four, would you say the most promising is stem cells? I like shockwave. Okay. I like shockwave. You know why? Because when I do shockwave therapy, it recruits the stem cells because stem cells go to area of damage. Yeah. So essentially I'm getting the stem cells. I'm getting the neogenesis, angiogenesis. It's not invasive. It's quick. It's not. So we're probably more, most optimistic on uh, shockwave least on PRP. So far. Yeah. And but maybe there's a combination. Maybe and we'll, shock, yeah. shockwave and PRP or and shockwave we'll, and And we'll see that with the yeah. results of this anyway soon. Thank you.